Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. First tonight, the percentage of Aboriginal people vaccinated in the state is lagging behind that of the non-Indigenous population. Advocates are encouraging pro-vaccine messaging within the community to ensure the most vulnerable are protected. 12-year-old Amaya is about to receive her second COVID jab. Here we go. All done. Really? Yep. Finish. Well, we have a grandma and you need the vaccine to see my grandma. So I got it for her. I got it um, so I, I could see my dad because he lives up in Melbourne. Lisa Coulson and the team at the Aboriginal Health Service say they're seeing high numbers of young people come forward to get the vaccine. That's a real positive. The um, more 25 to 40 sort of cohort um, are probably the, the more apprehensive um, group. Official figures say 32% of Tasmanian Aboriginals have had one dose. That compares with 60% of the total population. It's a nationwide problem. 37% of Aboriginals are partly vaccinated, down from 58% of all Australians. We've been frequent visitors to Flinders and the other Ferno Islands and we'll continue to work with the federal government to ensure that we do have high levels of vaccination. The Aboriginal Health Service is running clinics, one-on-one consultations and outreach services to encourage anyone that's hesitant. Lisa Coulson says the concerns she's coming across don't differ from the general population. Rather, there's a heightened scepticism. A lot of apprehension with some patients still around the timeline of the COVID vaccination with the um, higher rates of chronic disease of Aboriginal patients, there may be um, more, more impact concerns. We run youth programs, aged care programs, um, we're out in the community. Nala Mansell says it's critical to involve Aboriginal people themselves in pro-vaccine messaging, as well as the delivery of health services. People who they know, people who they're comfortable with, um, going out to homes, running programs within the community and educating. The goal? Reaching those 70 and 80 per cent targets at the same time as the rest of Tasmania. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Major issues within the state's prison service haven't been able to be adequately investigated due to a lack of resources, according to the custodial inspector. The criticism comes as the government continues to spruik the state budget handed down last week. The grand opening of classrooms for a Hobart primary school. So this is one of the new classrooms? This is one of the new classrooms. The $5 million upgrade at Lansdowne Crescent now completed. We're just absolutely delighted with um, the building upgrades that we've been able to receive. It's a real dream come true. <laughs> giving the Education Minister an opportunity to sing the praises of the state budget handed down last week. This is just part of our significant investment into education. The budget that we have just delivered has seen $8 billion into education, skills and training. Funding in other areas not going far enough. The custodial inspector's annual report detailing resourcing constraints impacting on its ability to investigate major issues within the prison service. We will work with the custodial inspector uh, as well as other statutory office so that they continue to fulfil their roles. Welcoming the additional funding for the office allocated in the budget. Just so they can do their job properly, but they actually respond to the reports that have been handed down, particularly to the Minister Elise Archer, rather than continuing to stow them away in a drawer somewhere. But pointing out the Department of Justice has failed to implement recommendations sent out in previous reports. Complete disregard for the welfare of Tasmania's prisoners and apparent disregard for the conditions that her own, her own custodial inspector is working under. While the Greens have tabled their alternative budget in Parliament. Our budget accepts the positives in the Gutland government's budget, defends, defunds the negatives and reallocates funding towards more inclusive, sustainable programs and initiatives. Prioritising funding for climate and essential services. Next slides, 7 Tasmania News. Three officers have faced disciplinary action following an investigation into police handling of child sexual abuse allegations against former nurse James Griffin. Police Minister Jackie Petrusma says the professional standards investigation has now been completed. I'm also advised uh, that one police officer received counselling, one was reprimanded and another received continuing professional development. 
Details will be provided to the Commission of Inquiry. Tasmania Police issued an apology to victims earlier this year. And police are investigating four attempted burglaries in Brighton and Sorrell overnight. They say the alleged offenders damaged the entry doors at four businesses, including Coles Express in Sorrell. It's understood the offenders left empty-handed. Anyone with information is urged to contact police or Crime Stoppers. Tasmania's mask mandate for large-scale events will again be put to the test, with Junction Arts Festival launching its five-day program tonight. Our reporter Garth Burley is live in Launceston. Garth, this event marks a special milestone. Yes, Kim, 10 years since the first ever Junction Arts Festival. The gates have just opened 10 minutes ago and a steady stream of people are beginning to flow in. What's on the cards for tonight? Well, first, there'll be a First Nations ceremony with featuring singing and dancing performances. It forms a part of an all-Tasmanian lineup. Now, this year will be very different to previous editions. Masks will be mandatory. However, organisers have insisted that that won't detract from the event. So you'll need your mask on when you're queuing to come into the square and at all other times during your time here. We've been really serious about acting as an enabler or a platform for Tasmanian artists to build their repertoire and, and we create a platform for them to be able to present their works. As for other COVID restrictions, crowd numbers will be capped at 1,000 people a day. But in some positive news, Kim, the ban on dancing is not here. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you very much, Garth. Garth Burley there at Junction. Boutique and burgeoning producers from around the state have been given a chance to sell their finest to the state's biggest hospitality provider. Federal Group hosting an event for Seed Lab companies today, giving them a chance to network with chefs and procurement managers from some of Tasmania's most iconic venues. For us, it's really about uh, seeing a lot of newer suppliers and uh, new ideas in produce. Um, you know, some of the ingredients are the same, but what they've done with them has been innovative. Opportunities like this are something that just don't come along in everyday life. We had an event like this earlier in the year with Woolworths, and several of our businesses, as a result, are now putting their products into stores Tasmania-wide. The 18 attendees included jam producers, cheesemakers and whisky distillers. Hobart artist Julie Goff says that Franklin Square's contentious Willem Crowther statue makes her so uncomfortable she couldn't look at it and would avoid the area. Her new artwork, Breathing Space, which removes the bronze figure from view, is a third of four temporary installations commissioned by the Hobart City Council before they decide its future. The people I know want him not to be here and not to look at him. And uh, yeah, so it's just part one, let's not look at him for a while. Uh, it kind of reduces his power, his gaze, his ownership of this, this precinct. So it's a, a very important um, part of, of uh, the art and, and truth telling uh, for our whole community. Crowther, an ex-premier, mutilated the remains of a Tasmanian Aboriginal man in the 1860s. Final preparations are underway for the Old Man and the Old Moon theatre production in Hobart. The show is one of the first to premiere in the new section of the theatre and it all kicks off tomorrow night. Under the bright lights of the new Theatre Royal Studio, the crew behind the Old Man and the Old Moon production are ready to break a leg. As a favour, I need to ask of you. Will you fill the moon for me every night? The all Tasmanian cast have been rehearsing since June and have been on standby in case the virus halts production at any moment. Of course, there's always been the threat of uh, untoward viruses appearing from over the seas, but uh, it's very exciting to be in this space. I've never performed in this space before. And there's plenty of music to uplift the spirits of theatre goers. It's very much a based on Celtic mythology, so you can expect a lot of Celtic-inspired music. There's, uh, it's a seafaring adventure too, so you can expect a few sea shanties, uh, the, a bit of uh, rambling folk music. It's, it's really quite wonderful. I think this is a show that we all sort of need right now. It's an uplifting um, piece of theatre that offers a bit of escapism, just a chance to sort of like leave our everyday lives and come to the theatre for two hours. The show premieres tomorrow night. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. 
Our newest icebreaker has set sail. The RSV Noyena, meaning Southern Lights, left the Netherlands last night, bound for its new home port of Hobart. Strong enough to withstand 14 metre seas and temperatures of minus 30 degrees, it took more than four years to build. The 160 metre icebreaker is set to be the main lifeline to Australian research stations in Antarctica. North Launceston has taken seven spots in the TSL's Team of the Year, including the captaincy role for Jay Foon, while first-year senior player Michael Stingle has doubled up, being named in the back half and claiming the Matthew Richardson medal for Rookie of the Year. In a debut to dream of, Matthew Richardson medalist Michael Stingle had a message from the awards namesake. All the best for the grand final, all the best for the rest of your footy career and uh, congratulations again mate on uh, winning the medal. It's not every day that you get a message like that so I'll cherish that. In a team of 19 debutants, Stingle had by far the most sting, averaging 18 disposals. Such was the backline Mavericks' influence, he even polled fifth in the Player of the Year votes. The best way of capping off 2021 could come in the grand final. Look, I'm keen to get out there next Sunday, but I think it's just to enjoy, good to enjoy the process. His mentor, Jay Foon, leads the Northern Skew Team of the Year. North Launceston has seven players named, Launceston five, Clarence and Kingborough three. The one Foon feels was stiff to miss out, North's tall Alex Lee. He's our go-to, he's our number one player, our best, best ruckman in the comp probably really. And in the symbolic coach's box, Kingborough's Trent Bomella. Pressure's on me now, I've got to find another level to keep working harder and keep growing uh, the Kingborough Tigers as a footy club but also um, our competition as a whole as well. He'd love to take the reins for real, even suggesting a return of representative footy against other state leagues next year to road test the side. When you go straight down the spine with Bush, Gunther, Marcus Gardner, um, Tommy Bennett and Dylan Riley, um, you know, and then with all those other ones around it, uh, I think that'll be a pretty formidable team. Tasmania's NBL1 championship favourites have been left stranded after the league cancelled the rest of the season because of interstate lockdowns. No title will be awarded this year, despite the North West Thunder sitting on top of the men's table and the Hobart Chargers third. The Launceston Tornadoes were fifth on the women's table and the Chargers last. Nearly 150 games remained in the season across the men's and women's competitions. It's another blow for the local teams. Last year's season was scrapped before it had even begun. In better news, the Jack Jumpers have appointed the first female chair in the competition's history. Media professional Karen Nylander will head the franchise's board and makes no secret of her goal to see basketball become the state's number one sport within three years. Like nothing I've been involved in before, it's captured the imagination of Tasmanians. They're hungry to see us on the national stage. The fixture will be released in the coming weeks and the side has faith its new home court will be ready in time. While the club is welcoming a multi-million dollar investment into the Silverdome, a venue which MBL boss Larry Kesselman has previously criticised. We won't be able to play there if it's not done. We need, we need the quality TV lighting to broadcast all around the world. Membership has already hit more than two-thirds of the club's target. Good evening. 18 in Hobart today, Launceston 16, 15 across Burnie and Devonport. 19 was the state's top about friendly beaches and bushy parks, drawn 17 and 18 across Smithton and St Helens. On the close-up shows some low cloud over the northwest due to onshore winds. Further out, a middle-level frontal cloud band extends across WA to the south of Tasmania. Tomorrow, a cold front pushes its way towards South Australia while another high moves over WA. Northeast to northwest winds tomorrow, 20 to 30 knots, swells up to 6 metres in the west and south and up to 1 metre in the north. A gale warning is current for eastern, southern and western coastal waters from Wineglass Bay to Stanley and a strong wind warning is current for eastern coastal waters from the tip of Flinders Island to Wineglass Bay and the central plateau lakes. Tomorrow's forecast now, becoming windy and sunny across Hobart and Signet, New Norfolk 26. In the north, Launceston 22, sunny about Devonport and Campbelltown. Burnie tomorrow, sunny 23 at Strawn, Smithton 20. St Helens and Swansea, sunny and 23 at Fingal. Looking ahead to the three-day forecast, Friday rain extending throughout the day, easing to showers about the west and south. Saturday, showers with southwesterly winds. And Sunday, showers mostly about the west and south. 
Capital cities, showers with a possible morning storm in Perth tomorrow, Cairns 28 and a sunny afternoon in Sydney. And currently Hobart partly cloudy and 14, Launceston 11 and Devonport partly cloudy and 11. That's all for weather tonight, Kim.